Okay, good morning, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and thank you for the opportunity to, pre to present this uh, slide deck this morning. So we're going to talk about uh, electronic record keeping in oncology, and I had intentionally put a question mark after the end of the title of this uh, presentation because this is hopefully more of a uh, thought-provoking presentation, and I'll try not to present a whole lot of new information, but try to see if we can't uh, begin to think about keeping our records in more of an electronic format than rather with paper or spreadsheets or something else. So without further ado, I will go into the next slide. So there's, of course, my disclosures. Um, we are a beta site from IQA. Um, I'm a member of the IBA Innovators Board, and I guess most importantly, neither the author nor the clinic receive any financial incentives or free hardware or software from IBA Dosimetry, which is the solution for electronic record keeping that we're using. I, I think that's very important that we uh, we still pay for everything. Everything we use is still uh, you know, paid for in the normal fashion. We have service contracts, and it's not incentivized in any way. So having said that, in my former life, uh, the first 10 years of my career was an imaging physicist. I started out uh, in x-ray fluoro and did uh, lots of MRI accreditations, nuke meds, and uh, all different things like this, mammography. And in addition to that, I was and still am a practicing health physicist, so I do lots of regulatory consultation, industrial radiation safety, um, and shielding for everything you could possibly want to uh, shield. And of the parentheses there, uh, once upon a time, we uh, designed a, a vault down in the Hampton Roads area to x-ray boats. And that was a large undertaking. It was lots of fun. Uh, it's a little things, I guess. But in 2007, I jumped the fence into radiation oncology and have been here ever since. So in that, I would like to start a vote right here. They tell me this little button here. We're going to start a vote. And the question that I have for the participants this morning, first and foremost, what is your primary job role? Just so we can see. Uh, so I think something should come up for you to vote. And we'll see. Are you a physicist, physician, dosimetrist, therapist, or other? So we'll see uh, how many of you are medical physicists and sort of the distribution uh, of folks that we have there. So we have 29 out of 80 votes. Don't be shy. And Okay, we'll end the voting, and we'll see that most of you are medical physicists and 31% of you are other. So where we are right this moment, where I see um, sort of the status, the landscape of QA record keeping, there are several software packages that you can purchase. Uh, there's Dose Labs and there's PipsPro and all manner of things <coughs> from multiple companies that allow you to analyze QA data. If you want to do flatness and symmetry, field size, uh, or any other manner of beam QA or machine QA, there's all kinds of software that will let you analyze this data and acquire this data. But record keeping still remains primarily a paper-driven process. You know, uh, everything is sort of siloed in its own individual software. Nothing really talks to one another, and if you're looking for documentation or an easy way to document something, it really necessitates you printing out a piece of paper with those results on it and keeping it in a book. So to further compound the issues, um, regulatory auditors, which we are becoming more and more familiar with in, in oncology with accreditations and inspections and so forth, have to go through a mountain of paperwork to evaluate your compliance with your state regulations, federal regulations, accrediting standards, and so forth and so on. So we have this gigantic mountain of paper uh, that we're sort of still forcing people to go through. So let's take a minute and look at the rest of the hospital, right? We see everything else usually in most modern hospitals. Everything's pretty much paperless, you know, on the floors. Um, you know, your radiology department, for example, all of your film from a radiology department is essentially gone. Um, I, I couldn't imagine a radiologist trying to read a, you know, 1,500-picture MRI on film. I mean, it would almost be impossible. 
the vast majority of medication orders that we use in the hospital, which are equally, if not more important than QA work, are paperless. You know, everything's digital now. And most oncology departments are now paperless with their record and verify system. You know, all of your treatment documentation is stored in either ARIA or Mosaic or some other record and verify system. So the entire oncology department has gone paperless, but to my knowledge, most physicists uh, still keep a lot of paper records. So let's take a walk. Um, and I have another vote here. So out of the participants that are here, if you are a medical physicist, what is your primary area of practice? Are you a therapy physicist, a diagnostic physicist, nuke med, health physics, or all of the above? And so let's see here if you guys can, hopefully that will pop up on your screen there, and you can vote for this, and we'll see the distribution of medical physicists that we have here. We'll see if we've got any therapy guys, any diagnostic folks, health physicists. I'm hoping we have lots of all of the above. <laughs> I think that's somewhat optimistic, but we'll see. We'll give it just a few more seconds. I've got 29 out of 92 votes. And let's see. All right, we'll stop the voting. There we go. Some more coming in. All right. So let's see what we got here. 95% of the people responded that they were therapy physicists, 2% were uh, nuclear medicine physics, and 2% were all of the above. Congratulations to the all of the above folks. So let's take a walk. Let's go down to radiology and see how things are done uh, in that department. So I think we can agree that Nuke Med has just as much paperwork. And for those of you who have never been in a Nuke Med department or done nuclear medicine physics, there's a ton of regulatory paperwork. Um, at perhaps at times, depending on the size of the department, probably more than ours. So how do they keep track of their paperwork in nuclear medicine? And how do you, you know, efficiently show a regulator three years of camera QA or dose calibrator QA and keep up with all of your dose records, you know, all of your uh, disposals and everything else? And the answer to that is QA software. So record keeping for nuclear medicine um, has existed for many, many years. Even when I started uh, in nuclear medicine and sometime around 1999, you had the DuPont Nuclear Medicine Manager, which was an entire department. You know, it was a DOS-based program, menu-driven, but you could keep track of the majority of your record keeping in a computer program. And in the years, there's been more and more offerings from this. Rad Runner, Pine Star's Nuclear Medicine Information System, Biodose, uh, that's a big one. Um, and so lots of companies have come out with comprehensive record-keeping programs for nuclear medicine departments. And further, the Pine Star and the Biodose actually mirror with the nuclear pharmacy. So the people sending you your material have the same software, and everything's nice and barcoded back and forth and sort of cuts down on manual entry. But... These pieces of software keep track of your patient doses, waste disposals, calibration, camera QA, licensing, receipt, and return of materials for patient doses, and just, you know, you can sit down at these with a nice interface. You can pull up, uh, look at them. You can print off a, a summary sheet if you'd like to present that to an inspector to see. So this is routine for a nuclear medicine department, This is, and it's been done for at least a decade in most modern nuclear medicine departments. But... Um, not so much in uh, oncology. So and I, I put this in. The, uh, the day I wrote this presentation, I got an email from Captain Tech. They had come out with another complete web-based radiology safety management system. It's a completely uh, online, cloud-based system um, to do exactly the same thing. So, again, lots of offerings in the radiology department for electronic record keeping. Yeah, this this is sort of when I sat down to look at this. That's the uh, about the face I made for this uh, seems kind of odd that we're left out. So my personal pressure points, this is, this is where I find issues with what we're doing. So you can perform a QA test, right? We as physicists have the tools. We can perform just about any test uh, if you give me enough time, right? Uh, if, assuming you don't have software, you can do things by hand. And I usually have enough time to perform all the required machine and patient QA, but how do you keep it? So a lot of it is... Some in some software. Sometimes I'll print a summary. Where do you keep it? Do you duplicate it? You know, how do you prevent data loss? I mean, if you have everything in large three-ring binders, which is the normal location for quality assurance in oncology, 
what happens if you lose something? What happens if something catches on fire? Um, you, you know, it's kind of hard to duplicate paper and not take up lots and lots of space. And ever remembering my time in nuclear medicine regarding quality assurance, regulators, and so forth, if you don't have the documentation, you didn't do it. So simply speaking, if you happen to lose your QA data that you have printed off and kept in your nice three-ring binder, there's really no proof that you did it unless you can regenerate this data or recreate this data. So this is just sort of where where I am right this moment in, in my clinic uh, or where we are trying to get out of. So what's out there? Um, oncology software vendors are addressing this issue, and more and more people are bringing offerings to the market that sort of address this situation and allow you to keep and track your QA data uh, on a computer, sometimes on the cloud, sometimes on a network system. And so you've got Sun Nuclear's Atlas program. You have Standard Imaging's QA pilot, uh, the IBA Dosimetry MyQA, and Varian Cumulate, which, and then Electa Aqua, which I didn't even know existed until a couple of days ago. And these are all programs where you can keep track of your QA. Uh, they have Some of them have nice web interfaces. Some of them use SQL databases. Some of them store in other ways. And I suppose the big difference between the offerings uh, in this sort of genre of software right here is whether or not you can drive equipment with the piece of software. I think that to me, that's been the biggest difference on how these particular pieces of software function. Uh, the Cumulate, for example, which is Varian's offering for QA, will not, uh, to my knowledge, now I, I could be wrong and someone can correct me, I don't think that Cumulate will drive a detector. So in other words, you can't drive a matrix or a map check or an IC profiler with it. You simply use that software to store your results. It's sort of a, a data storage repository. And I'm assuming that the Electa Aqua is kind of the same thing with that, um, that it, it just stores QA that you're doing from some other uh, some other method. I think the Sun Nuclear, the Standard Imaging, and the IBA are the only three that I know of, and I'm not as familiar with the Atlas or the QA pilot as I should be, but I think you can actually either drive or receive information directly from detectors from that piece of software. So you, you will be able to acquire from a tank, you'll be able to acquire from a, a 2D profiler, you'll be able to acquire you know, and, and analyze portal images, scan films, or however you want to, uh, to put the data in. So you've got um, different versions of the softwares that will do different things. And so really, when you want to do something like this, you need to sort of, do you just want to keep track of your data, or will you be directly acquiring data into your QA package? And that will kind of drive your decision as to which one of these you go with. Um, most of these, to my knowledge, have very nice web interfaces that you can go through and sort of see your QA real time. It can be viewable by someone in other facilities. You know, we. We are an HCA facility, and I think as such we have somewhere um, a little bit north of 80 cancer centers, East Coast, Colorado area, and so forth and so on. And so you may want a, a larger overarching corporation may want to use something like Varian Cumulate to keep track of the data from many centers, you know, sort of regardless of, of which other software platform you're using uh, to aggregate sort of corporate quality assurance compliance. And, things of that nature. But um, the, the big question, I think, going forward for the future will be how interchangeable is the data between these? You know, is there a standard format that you can transfer? Let's say you've got a, a standard imaging uh, beam checker and you want to import your data into Atlas or to MyQA. Is that going to be in a format that's readily accessible? So again, the sort of cross-platforming uh, data transfer is something that you might want to look at before you get into some sort of electronic QA setup. So, how are we addressing this issue? What are we doing to try to sort of make less paperwork in our department? At Pulaski, at our facility, we were fortunate enough to be asked to test the latest QA software from IBA. So we are implementing the MyQA package at our facility, which is sort of a, a natural progression for us. We use a matrix, we use a blue phantom, and we use an uh, uh, Star Trek for morning QA. So we are 
using three pieces of hardware to do morning patient and annual QA with. So we, you know, we already had all of the detectors. We had all three of the software packages that we were using individually, and so it was a, it was a nice uh, move for us to sort of test this sort of all rolled in one. So where they where IBA headed with this piece of software was rather than have uh, three separate pieces of software that had updates that were detached from one another and the data may or may not cross between them, they unified their approach to oncology QA and put everything in one nice bundle called MyQA. And so with the MyQA application, you can keep track of all your machine and your patient QA in one central location. So uh, I think that at least from a installation and licensing standpoint, standpoint will be uh, hopefully somewhat better than uh, what it was in the past. I know when you have to change computers, it gets weird with the licensing sometimes. So how this is laid out, um, the way we're using this, we have uh, MyQA Patients, which was OmniPro IMRT Plus. We have MyQA Machines, which was OmniPro Advance, which is what we were using for our morning and some of our monthly QA, and MyQA Accept, which is the uh, software that runs the Blue Phantom and does the data analysis from that. So everything is uh, connected. And I think more importantly, um, e you know, issues I had in the past, you could you could acquire data with your scanning Phantom, but there really was no way to get it inside your sort of machine QA, right? If you wanted to compare a morning profile to a tank profile, the interchange of those two sets of data was not exactly straightforward. It was sometimes possible, but really took uh, a little extra work to get that. So not so much anymore. Now you can bring data over, you can send data back, uh, back and forth between softwares. Uh, and I guess for those of you who are, are doing uh, 2D ion chamber array QA, uh, the, the patient QA is included all with this. So everything's in one nice small package. So how is this possible? How does this work? Where do you, um, you know, how, how does this differ from what you've done in the past? In the past, we've had the OmniPro Advance, which is our morning QA software, has been installed on each workstation, on each one of our mosaic sequencers. And that data is sort of siloed by itself on that machine. You can't really compare two machines. Everything is stored on the local machine, which from a, a data integrity is, is kind of not a good idea to keep stuff on your local hard drive. So this particular piece of software and most of the other ones, I think the Atlas and the uh, standard imaging version as well, they are installed on one centralized uh, SQL database. So you're going to have somewhere hopefully off in IS land, you're going to have a, a, an SQL database that is on a very large uh, network server, which is going to run uh, all of your data back and forth. And you will install the software on individual clients in your department, which uh, for, for us is, is extremely good because we have everything you know, sort of installed a, a, almost in an identical setup to this. So we have, uh, your data is accessible uh, to cross-reference between devices. If I want to look at data between my EX and my IX, you can pull uh, data from any one of the devices that you have, uh, compare those two. You can compare a Star Trek profile and a uh, matrix profile to see sort of what the difference is. You know, they've got different detector spacing, so they're uh, presentation of a profile may be slightly different, and you can look at those two now and sort of see if there are any differences um, between those two. Um, in addition to this, you can also pull something from Accept and compare it to a, a profile that has been acquired on a 2D ion chamber. So the nice thing uh, about this, let me see what the neck, okay. Having your QA data on a networked SQL server, for us, and we worked with our IS folks to get this um, put in, and we, we tried to do this right from the start. So we took a, we sort of dropped back, looked at how we had other pieces of software installed, whether it be local, whether you had an SQL something running somewhere else, um, whether you were running your uh, patient QA off of a laptop, which is a, a, something that I think a lot of folks do. You'll run your matrix or your Star Trek off of a laptop rather than installing the software on a workstation. So the benefit of this is it, having our QA data on a networked SQL server, it provides near real-time backup of data. 
Uh, this assumes your IS department is managing the server correctly, and our IS department does an absolutely wonderful job uh, with data backup, data redundancy, and so I'm pretty much assured I'm not going to lose any data. This allows installation in a virtual environment. Um, most of the computer systems, at least in our uh, sort of place in the world here in our company, are going to a virtual environment. I, I think a lot of the uh, IS folks are opting towards virtual computers rather than purchasing actual hardware. So our centralized QA server is a Windows server that has uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 as a VMware virtual appliance. So it does not exist. It sort of exists only in a larger server somewhere else. If this server malfunctions, it's really easy. Something goes wrong. Something gets corrupted. It's anything that happens to it that would otherwise cause it not to function properly. Just delete it and restore last night's backup, and your data loss is minimized. The only thing you may or may not lose is what you did you know, this morning or immediately after or right before the machine broke between the last backup. This can cut down on costly hardware that needs to be refreshed. I mean, for those of you who have Mosaic, uh, you know, about every five years you have to, you know, you have to repurchase servers, and that can be a costly endeavor. You know, you've got to spend 30 grand on a new server, on a new rack mount server, and with a virtual appliance, at least the way we have this installed with MyQA, you can really cut down on that cost. Virtual servers are uh, exceedingly cost efficient, according to our IS department. It allows the distribution and installation of a much smaller client software that does not need all of the SQL server components installed on it. So you can have the, uh, the, the bulk of the heavy lifting done by your virtual server and a smaller sort of client interface installed on your workstation, such as your Mosaic workstations at your, right at your machine. And it it's a, a, doesn't require, it's not as much of a, a processor load on those PCs. For me, this, the next bullet point is probably the, the, my biggest pinch point. We have a two-year tech refresh uh, on all of our PCs in our entire hospital. Every two years, new computers come through whether you want them or not. So if you have to replace a local machine that's somewhere in your QA workflow, you simply reinstall the client on that piece of software, reattach back to your central database, and you're right back up where you were. You know, there's no, you know, you'll have to, license the, the piece of software, but then that will take care of everything. And as soon as you reattach back to that SQL database, everything's right there. You're ready to go. All of your detectors are still fully calibrated, qualified, your machine set up, your department information is still in there. It allows more efficient reporting of QA data results, especially if your program is spread across a large campus or geographic area. So if you're going to implement something uh, across multiple facilities, which uh, we are trying to do now between our sister facility, uh, you can simply use the same QA database and assuming that you, you have enough licenses to go around for whatever software, you can use between two facilities uh, the same or three, four, five, or six, the same piece of QA software. And it's really easy to standardize a quality assurance program between multiple facilities when you have everything in one centralized location. And for, for at least for... Uh, an inspection point, it provides a single point of review for regulators and other inspectors that need access to your data. I, I mean, it's, it, it functions very much like uh, a record and verify system does for your treatment and your electronic medical records. You can use the web interface that is provided uh, to, you know, you can set a, a reviewer, an auditor, an inspector down at this and say, uh, here is the last year's worth of uh, calibration data. Here is the last year's worth of symmetry and flatness data, uh, the annual, the daily QA, and they can look at this. You can show trended results. You can show tolerance bands uh, with your data, and it's a nice uh, interface that will allow people to view your data in, in a very coherent fashion. Now, of course, uh, there's also the option to print off uh, reports if you want. If you want to print off a summary report of data that was done between date A and date B, that's always an option as well, If uh, assuming someone wants to see something like that. So uh, the three modules that we are using, um, and, and this was this used to be OmniPro Advanced, which we've, I think, used now for six years for our morning QA. Um, we use OmniPro Advanced with a Star Trek 
uh, on we have one star track between both machines and we just simply have a card that rolls it back and forth and this has been replaced now with my QA machine so with my QA machines um, I've got uh, modules to do symmetry flatness MLC you can do your VMAT QA uh, you can do your CBCT analysis you can do your it, it's got the fast track mode which uh, I, I'm really quite fond of which allows you to see real-time profiles uh, at a sort of a sampling interval that you specify. So if you're looking at um, doing real-time beam steering, that is still in there. And I, I did note um, at APM this year, I took several pictures of some poster presentations that were done on just this topic with different different detectors. I think the folks were using a, a Sun nuclear device uh, for the uh, feasibility of doing real-time beam steering with a 2D profiler. And of course, I, I will remind everyone that the Varian upgrade, the symmetry interlock upgrade, they actually use an IC profiler too to do the beam steering verification for that. Um, you have your EPID QA plug-in. So this, this keeps track of what we have here is that we can, we can do all of the machine QA with this uh, in one nice little module. And I think some of these are extra options that you can purchase um, with your MLC, some of the VMAT, uh, Death Symmetry, of course, should come with it. But My QA Patience, and there's a, uh, there's a typographical error there that should say My QA Patience has all the flexibility of OmniPro IMRT Plus, but is integrated into your entire clinic workflow. So I, for myself, no longer have to carry the laptop around from, from Linac to Linac to do a patient QA if we want to acquire uh, some sort of QA data. So that's integrated in there as a nice place uh, to keep your patients. You can have their name, RO number, data. And of course, again, this is stored in an SQL database, which is, you know, for those of you who like to do this kind of stuff, is queryable. Uh, you can pull and aggregate data from that if you, if you like. My QA accept. This is the uh, th this is uh, really what I like about this being integrated because now the uh, you can you can you can actually use this to look at your profile data and transfer it back and forth between different programs. It's integrated into your QA workflow, and so hopefully this will. Uh, I think the biggest complaint you hear from most people with their scanning tank software is you know you only get it out once a year and if nobody remembers how to use it. And hopefully if it's somewhat more accessible, uh, folks will be more inclined to uh, look at it more often and keep up with it. But uh, it, it, you know, it works, it works really well. You can uh, benchmark. They have the, uh, the cloud that they are implementing, I think, in version two. And I, I think the other software vendors have a very similar uh, solution to this. You can benchmark your commissioning data with your peers. You can look at other folks' data, which I think we're now in the age of big data where we want to compare things um, with other facilities. We want to make sure that uh, a sort of a sanity check does, does our data match someone else with a similar machine. And so with this, you will be able to, to benchmark your data uh, against other people, not only your scanning data, but your morning QA data if you want to look at you know your passing rate for your cone beam uh, CT phantom, you can do sort of the same thing with that. So if you build it, it will work. And uh, again, my apologies for not knowing exactly how the Atlas or the standard imaging product works, but I'm, I'm hoping that it's very similar to this. You can have a custom QA protocol that's built to encompass an entire QA workflow. Uh, this is one that, that we have here. Um, that we sort of set up for our morning QA. And it has the morning machine QA, it has the monthly machine QA, it has the imager QA, the annual QA, and you can even, if you'd like to put in there, commissioning tasks. You can have all these as one large QA protocol. You can build them as smaller QA protocols. And the nice thing is the tasks can be as simple or as complicated as you desire. Um, for example, if you do not have the cone beam uh, plug-in, uh, I think that's a purchasable option with that. If you don't, say you're using another software, let's say you're using PIPS Pro to do your cone beam imaging analysis, then you could simply, in your QA protocol, make a yes or no checkbox. Was it done? Yes. Uh, you could even make a checkbox to put the results in if you wanted to do that. Um, or if you have that module, you could just simply have that module being used, import your images, have them analyzed, and trend those results in the software. So um, it works with or without those modules. I think it works somewhat easier with them, but you don't necessarily have to have them work. So 
This is a very simple QA protocol um, that has absolutely nothing to do with physics. And that, that's really why I like uh, this type of a platform uh, for setting up your QA is that it doesn't need to be physics related. Uh, and so it's very flexible. This is our end of day checklist. We had this on a piece of paper. We have clipboards at each machine. And at the end of the day, the therapist has to go through and make sure that the cabinets are locked. Did we did the charge export from Mosaic. Did you stock the linen? They make sure the O2's off. Did you clean the room? Did you clean the table? And then monthly, they have a, a room safety check that's required by our facilities department where we go through and look for light bulbs or anything else that may be wrong with the room. And, I, you know, I got to looking at this, and because I can just put in a yes, no, and for charge export, we actually have a, a number that, that the therapist can put in when they're done for the day, we just made a, a, a QA protocol for this. So they can do this at the end of the day, and we sort of eliminated that clipboard where you can eliminate something like that from your from your paper. Um, and then those results via the web interface are viewable to our department director. She can go in and look at this and make sure that everything was done. She can, the clinical coordinator can go in and check this data and see who did it, whether it was done, and if there were any problems. And of course, with this, if any of their, if there's a problem with any of these, there's a space for whoever is using the software to enter in some sort of an issue. Uh, you know, the oxygen was off. Well, you can put in a note that says something's wrong with the handle. Need to put in an engineering work request, and that will go off and be reviewed by somebody. So, moderately complicated, and this is something that is kind of phys well. It's definitely physics, but it's you could. You could set this up for oncology, or you could set this up for radiology. Uh, this is a TG66 uh, simulator QA protocol that we build. And of course, all of this is not expanded, but you can see there that I've got tests for the annual, daily, and monthly QA. And so with this, you can do, I actually have this set up. We have a Philips Brilliance Big Bore 16, and I have this set up per sort of their morning QA using their phantom in the morning. So the therapist can enter in this uh, data in the morning and it prompts them every morning to put the things in. You know, did you do the laser QA? Did you do the gantry zero check? So forth and so on. Um, we have a, a hit the BB where they test the lasers, their air calibration. And a lot of these are just check boxes, yes or no, did it function or not function? And then the uh, some of the CBCT or some of the, the, the CT measurements that actually put in the uniformity numbers uh, as pulled from the phantom. So, as I've mentioned here, tests that have no defined analysis function can be listed as pass-fail, numeric result, with upper and lower bounds. So even though you're not analyzing anything, you can still put in pass-fail criteria that will alert the user uh, when something is out of tolerance. And the phantom setup, if you're using the module for uh, cone beams or for MLC or any of the other modules, is very flexible for imaging performance. So you can use a multitude of phantoms from multitudes of vendors. Um, most of us with Varian and Electa machines probably have a, a cat fan floating around our uh, department somewhere, which is perfectly acceptable for uh, TG66 simulator QA. And so this is what I would consider a uh, sort of a moderately complicated QA protocol. You know, there's, there's daily, monthly, and annual QA in this that you can keep track of. And then we move on to extremely complicated. Uh, this is, uh, I, uh, I did this just to see sort of what it would look like. This is a, uh, it's just a snippet because the actual protocol is quite long, of a custom-built Clinac customer acceptance procedure for a variant Clinac. I went through the acceptance procedure manual for the accelerator and copied and made an entire protocol for acceptance testing a machine according to their particular definitions. And inside, you can see the test template, and my apologies for the small font. You can name this. In here, I have specifications. I've got tests set up. I've got expected results. Uh, I have, you know, all of these things listed. And as far as I know, you could, if you wanted to, use this to actually do the acceptance test on a brand new accelerator if you chose to use something like this. Um, of course, I would recommend probably putting it on paper too because that's what Varian wants to see. But you could 
you could accept your entire clinic in this piece of software, and with that, you would get all of that baseline information that would be available for you to use at some later time. Uh, or if you wanted to repeat some of these tests for your annual, you could make an annual test that sort of mirrors the uh, customer acceptance procedure. And so I've built one of these for the CAP for a clinic. I've built one of these for the OBI. I have an OBI acceptance procedure, which actually cuts down on a lot of the paperwork because all of your CAT fan measurements that are required for your uh, acceptance are automated with the, the, the CBCT module. So you can take pictures of your phantom and just have it automatically analyzed and, again, have that data for use later on for routine QA. So you can actually benchmark against your acceptance data, which, which in my mind is really what you want to do. You, you don't want to try to, you know, I, I'd always like to go back to what it was exactly when it was new. So how can you see your results? There is the MyQA cockpit that allows the physicist an at-glance view of all QA tasks performed and their results. So you can go through and pull up by machine, by test, uh, and then inside each one of these tests, morning QA, there's all of these different, uh, all of these different parameters that are measured every morning. You can view them, you know, all of them, last couple days, last 30 days. You can uh, see the trending of this data uh, with or without your tolerance bands put in there. And for us, this is really nice because for our morning QA using the Star Trek, we actually do most of the monthly required tests every morning just simply because the detector will acquire the data. Every morning, we just go ahead and do it every morning. So the, the data is so dense coming out of that that we, we use that daily. So in the morning, we, we actually do uh, we'll do profile, constancy, symmetry, flatness, field size, uh, energy, using their build-up plates for those. And so it's a, a really a ton of data. Dynamic wedges we do every morning, a 6x in 10 degree and an 18x 60 degree out. And so you can log into this, or anybody that you get permission can log into this and view all of your different machines uh, in real time. And so what's really nice about this is what we're, what we're working on is trying to get a lot of this data that we do on paper in, inside this piece of software. You can see here that I've got uh, the big bore um, for each of our facilities. I've got the machines for each of our facilities. We've got the treatment planning system uh, in here. And so we're working on anything that we would put on paper, anything that we would have a checklist for to try to insert into this. Uh, so really it's n not just for uh, strictly physics QA or strictly machine QA. You can make a QA protocol for anything you want. And I assume the other vendors will are, are equally as flexible with that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you would traditionally keep in a piece of IBA software. Um, further than that, if you wanted to do machine QA, if you have diagnostic physicists in your hospital, there's absolutely no reason why they could not use this for analyzing uh, phantom images that were coming from radiology uh, or keeping track of radiology data for CT accreditation, for MR accreditation. Um, I, mammography may be a bit complicated, but um, nuclear medicine, absolutely. So this, I think this type of a platform has extensions that can sort of go beyond the, the therapy department and try to unify most of what we would consider to be physics QA for your entire hospital. And now, that, again, that is a lofty goal, and I'm painting a pretty rosy picture right here. This is a, it's a, it's a pretty dramatic change in your department. It takes a lot of thought to move everything to an electronic, so it's, it's, it's not going to be simply plug the thing up in the morning and go. It will take some, some uh, work on the end user's part to get this set up properly because what looks good on paper doesn't always necessarily translate into what a com piece of computer software will do. So it's, uh, it's, it's, been an interesting, um, it's been an interesting endeavor, I'll put it that way, trying to unify everything into one, into one nice small package. So uh, with this, you also, in addition to your machine QA and all of your other quality assurance, the interface allows you to look at your patient QA as well uh, if you're using this. And, uh, and so you can see, and I actually took this uh, slide from version 2 of my QA, which I think is now released. And with this, you can check to see whether or not Mrs. Jones was done, which machine he or she was measured on, what type of uh, device it was measured on, when it was measured, who it was measured by. And I like if you, uh, if you look right in the middle of the gray band there, there's imported, measured, verified, and finalized. And so you can 
further drill down on your quality assurance uh, to, to sort of know if you have multi, multiple people in your department, you can look at, you know, whether or not it's the, the entire QA is done or whether maybe it's just been measured but you've not imported your fluence maps, and it allows you the flexibility to um, – it allows you to sort of keep track of where you are in the QA process of a patient. So, and the interface is device neutral. That's that's really nice. Anything that is on your, you know, any browser, any modern browser that is on your computer in the hospital will allow you to view this. You just simply log in, put in your username and password, and it's it's done. As long as you have a valid username and password. So for that, I actually really like that that you can um, that you can have this available from any any PC in your hospital. So that's uh that's that's all I've got for 